Hi, I'm Brett McCarthy, and welcome to Cooking at the College of West Kentucky Community and Technical College. We are here at the Culinary Laboratory of the West Kentucky Community and Technical College's Culinary Arts Program, and we're going to be showing you over the next 30 minutes a couple of things that you can use at your house. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. We're going to be making a Zabaglion sauce, which is a basic custard sauce. And uh, it's just a very simple Italian dessert. It has some very simple ingredients to it. In fact, just four ingredients, four basic ingredients. We have egg yolks in them, in it, uh, Marsala wine, granulated sugar, and vanilla. And I'm using a actual vanilla extract because as with all custards, and because this is a very uh, simple dessert with only four ingredients in it, uh, imitation vanilla just won't, won't do. However, I'm not totally opposed to imitation vanilla. Uh, it has its purpose uh, for cost effectiveness in, in many dishes. Essentially, what Zabaglion sauce is served over is fresh berries. And you can serve it over different kinds of fruit, but essentially what it's allowed allows you to do is to be able to sweeten things that are normally very, very tart. Uh, so it kind of offsets that. Um, it's also a very easy dessert. And this isn't a, um, a particularly cold dessert or warm dessert, but yet it, it combines a nice warm flavor and warm sauce to something that is cold. So it's very interesting how you got the two different kinds of uh, uh, sauce, you got the two different kinds of products coming together, and it really makes a very unique product. So essentially what we'll have here is we have four egg yolks. We're going to put that in here. We're going to add our sugar. It really doesn't matter what order you do it that in. The amount of sugar you're going to use is a quarter of a cup. Okay, and this will be enough uh, Zabaglion sauce to do approximately four servings. We're going to add our Marsala wine has to be a sweet Marsala wine. Now what is interesting about this is that you don't necessarily have to use Marsala wine. If you don't like Marsala wine, uh, you could use a uh, Zinfandel or you could use a rosé wine, something nice and light. Uh, anything that you uh, particularly like. This is a wine sauce, so as long as the wine is a relatively sweet wine, you're all set. And a little bit of vanilla to that. As you can see, it's very, very dark. I like to try and aerate a little bit just to kind of froth it up. What you got to be very guard against initially is that before you take this over to the double boiler, um, you don't want to have it instantly curdle on you. And initially, that might happen. So this might take a little bit of practice before you get it right. Okay? We are dealing with eggs after all, and one of the things about eggs is that they like to curdle, and they curdle at about 150 degrees. So if we're not careful and if we don't keep them moving, uh, they will uh, turn into, uh, well, scrambled eggs. Okay. So we're going to bring this product, and oh, and I wanted to show you what this will actually look like when we're all done. You can see that it's very, very pretty. The uh, sauce is, covers all the berries. It doesn't just sit on top. Often we have a dessert that, you know, the sauce just sits on top, and and we don't really appreciate the sauce, but in this uh, particular dessert, the sauce is the main uh, character. So we're going to take this over to the double boiler. And what we want to do is make sure that we have a lot of air here, because we don't want to create scrambled eggs. So at this point, this is a very delicate process, but not so delicate that you can't handle it at at home. Most cooking is uh, not as mysterious as, as one would like to make it out to be, especially some of these fancier desserts. I'm just going to turn down the little heat a little bit because I don't want to get burnt. And because I don't have an assistant today, I'm not a very rich chef and this isn't a very rich sew, so we're going to I had to step away for just a minute to get a cloth. 
Now, as you can see, it's starting to get nice and frothy. And at this point, you may want to take it away and then bring it back. We will know that this is done when it starts to get very ribbony. And actually, as you're whipping it, you'll actually start to see ribbons form. You want to make sure that the water is boiling underneath. If it's not boiling underneath, it's not going to work for you. Okay, you need that hot steam underneath to cook it. As you can see, this is starting to get very frothy and thick. At this point, the chances of it curdling on you are very slim. And that's why I always say to my students, when doing this, you have to be very careful to really put that air into it. It's almost like making whipped cream. Very, very similar in procedure. I'm take it away for just a second there. I don't want to overcook it either. So that's why I'm kind of taking it away and putting it back to the heat. And you can see this is really nice. Now again, if you did it with a different uh, color wine, uh, it would take on that color instead. And I've tried it with all different kinds. I find that the Marsala wine has a a nice sweet flavor to it. So if you particularly like uh, Marsala chicken, or chicken Marsala rather, uh, then you'll really like this dessert. And this will complement any entree that you would have uh, because it is so nice and light. See, we're starting to get nice, a nice ribbon effect there. As you start cooking it, the, the frothiness will actually go down. It will actually deflate a little bit because what's happening is now the sauce is starting to congeal. What the eggs have done initially is they'll expand and then they will start to contract. And so rather than turning into something that uh, is uh, very light and fluffy, it'll actually be a little bit more thicker and condensed. And you can actually see the, the ribbon starting to form. You have to have a strong arm. I suggest you get your husband to do this, especially if you don't like him very much that day. Say, honey, will you stir this for me? Most of the students, uh, this is a good introduction for them because they they realize that you know not everything just kind of comes together magically, and that it's very important that you follow procedure when you. Uh, make these things. Okay. So basically we want it at a at a pourable state. And each time you do this it'll come out just a little bit different. It's not always going to come out exactly how you um, each time the exactly the same way but you want to be able to pour it because you basically want this sauce to be able to drip down and coat all the different berries. So this is what we're going to do and we'll just take this nice sauce and we'll let it drain down in there. I'm just going to wiggle it a little bit so that it goes down in there. And that way for every bite that your guest will or you or your guest will eat will actually have that sauce. And essentially what makes this so wonderful is because you know so many times we go and we buy berries or strawberries and they have such a tart flavor to them. 
and we're inclined to put sugar on them, well, this is going to be something very special that you can do to this that people won't suspect. So um, I'll just put a little bit more on there. We'll just let that go right down in there. And you can actually see how pretty that looks. And you can actually see the nice color contrast between the sauce and the berries. Very, very pretty. So I add a little uh, doily uh, on the plate there. I just had some fresh whipped cream. I might just squirt right on there. And a nice little sprig of fresh mint. And that's basically the uh, dish. Uh, berries with a fresh Zabaglion sauce. And uh, bon appetit. Well, welcome back to the show. We just finished up uh, the Zabaglion sauce served over uh, fresh fruit. And what is really neat about this, if you have a couple of minutes, uh, you can pour it over and it'll actually start to work its way down. So within about three or four minutes, you'll actually have all the berries covered and they'll all be coated with this wonderfully rich sauce. It's thick enough so as you're spooning it, it's not gonna just run off. It's not a runny sauce, but it is thin enough where it'll actually filter down and cover all the different berries. What you wanna try and use is something like a champagne flute or a parfait glass like what we've uh, chosen. And you know, it is actually, I kind of think it's um, one of those uh, uh, desserts that you can use for you know, an Independence Day kind of function. It's very patriotic. We have the white and the reds and the blues and uh, looks very, very pretty. So uh, that's, that's the first dish that we just did, the first dessert. And then the next dessert that uh, we plan on doing is this is also used as a custard. And uh, essentially what it is, is it's a chocolate bread pudding. And I'm going to show you a very easy way to uh, take leftover chocolate cake or chocolate pound cake or, or donuts that you have left over and essentially turn it into something that is really a nice culinary work of art. You know, we, we often as, as culinary professionals have to take ingredients that we have presently. In fact, uh, the the chef that uh, was hired for the Paducah Country Club uh, was hired out of this uh, kitchen uh, by demonstrating this over a week period. Uh, different chefs came in and they would have to actually demonstrate their wares and we provided them with a mystery box of ingredients. And they had to take ingredients for and they had to make a dessert basically out of uh, very few things that we provided them. So that's what you will find is more of the norm that a chef will take very simple ingredients and put them together and, and take what they have. Essentially, it's also a very cost-effective way to do that uh, is by taking uh, ingredients that you already have and not, um, and, and not trying to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, okay? So I, would, I did want to talk, just before we move on, I did want to talk a little bit about the culinary program. Obviously, this is something that we want to highlight. Um, our program has really expanded, and what we're trying to do is bring it to the next level. We've put about $100 thousand dollars and just new equipment into this uh, program and we have a new bistro and uh, we're just doing some wonderful things so we hope that you have an opportunity this year to come by and, and see us we're always welcoming guests and visitors and uh, just call ahead if you would if you uh, want to come down I'll be happy to give you a private tour or you can uh, talk to one of the advisors um, whether or not you're interested in actually attending the program or if you simply want to visit the program and you, ha and you want to uh, possibly do a demonstration with us or something of that nature. We're very happy to do that. We also offer a variety of catering services and we're happy to do that. All our, our entire program is, uh, is, is staffed by uh, uh, well-trained chefs. I'm a chef that is uh, trained by the American Culinary Federation and uh, so you'll be assured that you'll get a very good, if you hire us for catering, not only a, a good person to run the, run the show, but you'll also be doing something good for the community, and you'll get it at a very good price. So we're happy to do that. Thank you very much.
Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Brett McCarthy, the chef and instructor and program coordinator for the West Kentucky Community and Technical College's Culinary Arts Program. Happy to have you back with us. Uh, we just finished up with a custard base sauce, which is called the Zabaglion sauce, made with marsala wine, sugar, and vanilla. A very interesting dessert served over fresh berries. We're now going to move on and do something else with eggs that is also custard based and it has egg yolks in it as well as the white. So we got whole eggs, four whole eggs here, vanilla, sugar, and I'm using half and half. You could use, you can use milk and custard, you can use uh, light cream. I'm using half and half. I like the, the extra flavor and body that half and half uh, gives the dish. And essentially what this is, how this uh, dish came about, is that uh, I was having a dinner party at my home and didn't know what to make and had some leftover chocolate cake and said, well, I can't give my uh, guests this. They're going to expect something better than from the chef. So um, decided to kind of change it up a little bit, had some sauces inside the uh, refrigerator that I had prepared. I had made a white chocolate sauce and I also had made a raspberry sauce already. So that was ready to go and then I had this old chocolate cake. And of course, this isn't the original chocolate cake that I had from there. We, this is actually the, uh, uh, something that I had bought, but uh, essentially what it is is um, we're going to take and, and uh, make what one would call probably like a chocolate bread pudding. And this is another thing that you can do with custard. Um, is simply take a, uh, these simple ingredients and add it with any kind of um, bread or sweet pastry Okay, so if you didn't have chocolate cake, maybe you had some leftover um, chocolate donuts or some pound cake or something like that. You could use, you could use this as a substitution uh, in this product. So um, very good thing, you know, we got leftover birthday cake, all those kinds of things. So it's really an interesting way and very fancy. So we're taking something that is very ordinary um, and very mundane and we're making it an extraordinary item that you would be proud to serve as kind of the creme de la creme if you will, uh, at the end of your wonderful dinner. So essentially the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of butter. And I'm just going to brush these. Uh, these aren't really ramekins. These are, uh, I was going to say ramekins, but these are s soup cups. And you can use anything, anything that is, can go into the oven and won't bust on you. And these, these won't. These are nice heavy uh, china resist heat pretty well. But you could use um, small souffle dishes. You could use anything um, that would be oven ready. And of course, if you didn't want to do individual ones, you could do a large um, casserole type of dish. Okay. And we're going to add our four egg yolks. And I'll just tell you a little bit about what we have here before I even get started. We, we're going to need a stainless steel bowl, a whip, sheet pan, a 9 by 12 or so um, cake pan, a couple of dishes, oven ready dishes, okay? And, uh, and that's basically the only ingredients you're going to need. You're also going to have to, you're going to need to boil some water because this actually has to cook in a water bath and it's cold water won't do. It would just take too long. So we need hot water. So I have that going on the stove here, boiling away. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So that's all we need for that. Okay. So hot tap water generally won't be hot enough. You will have to do that. Okay. We're going to take our cake. And again, you can use any kind of product. You know, if you don't like to mess with butter or anything like that, or you don't have butter, margarine will do. I know that's very taboo for a chef to say, but uh, margarine will do, even spraying it with a little bit of Pam. You just need to kind of give that dish a non-stick surface so that the product will come out easily enough. All right, so I'm just going to take that chocolate cake and just put it right on in there. Just kind of pack it in a little bit. All right. Okay, so we're going to add our egg yolks to our bowl, a little bit of vanilla. And just like the Zabaglion, it doesn't matter the order. 
No? Sugar set up a little bit there. Okay, and I'm gonna add about a cup, half and half. Essentially, this is one part eggs to one part half and half. So if you want to increase this, this will make about four portions. But if you decided you wanted to do six portions or eight portions, you wouldn't necessarily have to double everything or remember a special recipe. It's just a one to one ratio, okay? So very, very simple. Okay, so we're gonna just stir that up. And really the only difference between this and say making a, a quiche is that this has sugar and a quiche doesn't. And quiche is another form of a, a custard. The quiche will generally also use milk instead of cream, but a lot of times I'll use half and half in my quiches too because it makes it much lighter. Anything that has more fat added to it will actually be lighter than something that uses um, a leaner dairy product such as skim milk or whole milk. I'm gonna really stir that up a little bit. Okay. Okay, and then the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm basically just going to pour this over, and you can use a, a ladle. I don't happen to have one readily available. So I'm just gonna pour this right over this cake. And I'm not gonna fill it up to cover the cake. I'm gonna have it just below the surface of the cake. And you can actually see that uh, that's happening when you get up to that point. So you should still have some of the cake sticking out. You don't wanna to put too much in there. What this is going to do is it's going to take that dry cake, I'm going to put just a little bit more in here, and it's going to rehydrate it. As you notice, most of the time, cake won't actually go bad on you, it just dries out. Same way with bread. Um, unless you have it in a bag or something and moisture is allowed to build up on it. So we're going to put that, and then we're going to take a little bit of hot water here, water that we've been boiling on the stove, and very carefully pour that in. We're gonna pour it about halfway up the sides of those baking dishes. See, we got a little bit of cake crumbs in there. And we're gonna put it in a 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes, okay? Now, the reason why I have this on a sheet pan is because if you try it and touch this, this is really hot, okay? So it's very critical that I have it so that I'm not gonna burn myself. And very carefully, Put it in your oven and slide it in. Okay, so essentially that's what we're going to do, 375 degrees and uh, for about 30 minutes just until it starts to set up. Um, you'll know that it's done because it won't, there won't be any, it won't jiggle or anything like that. So just like you would when you bake a cake, you want to have a very firm center and when you touch it, it'll, it'll spring back. Now what I have, through the power of television, I have one already done, of course. And this one has been uh, already baked off. And you can see it's very, very firm. And when you take it out of the oven, you wanna let it cool just a little bit. What's nice about this is this is something that you can actually be making while you're uh, conversing and having your dinner and then you can pull it out and by the time the coffee is done it'll be cool enough because you still want it to be a little bit warm you don't want it to completely cool off okay so i'm just going to clean off this a little crumbs on this plate here and we're going to just slide a knife and you can see how that's just moving so easily really you'd think it would just stick right in there but if you if you grease that very well it would be perfect. Now this is a, a little trick that we use to be able to unmold things. And there it is right there. I'm going to just slide it to the back just a little bit. So I'm going to make a little bit of sauce here. And essentially I got 
a uh, couple of different sauces here. I'm going to go over and grab my raspberries. Okay. And essentially, I'm going to make a little design. You can see I made something here, uh, but we're going to make something a little bit more fun today. Okay, well, my little squirter is not working very well, but that's all right, because I don't need it to work very well. Okay, this is basically another uh, kind of custard sauce. Of course, this is something that is pre-made, something you can buy uh, any, anywhere at any uh, grocery store. Uh, this is just a vanilla custard sauce. But we make this also in the kitchen, and it's called a creme anglaise. And again, that's just sugars and cream, and, and, uh, and it's cooked over very similar to the Zabaglion sauce. So um, it all ties together very nicely. So we're going to just move that around just a little bit. Okay. And you may want to do, actually do the unmolding uh, before you start putting that sauce on. And then I'm going to just take a let, little raspberry coulis. In another show that you'll want to watch, I'll show you how to make all these wonderful dessert sauces. Um, these sauces can get awfully expensive, and these are things that you can make ahead of time, and they'll last wonderfully uh, in the refrigerator. Okay? So we're going to just squirt this around just like this. You can make any kind of design that you want. Very, very pretty. And then taking a toothpick, I'm using a steak knife, doesn't really matter. We'll just make a little bit of a design. And it'll be very, very pretty. Just like that. Okay. At that moment, we'll actually, and you can serve this with, say, some nice vanilla ice cream. I'm just going to use a little bit of whipped cream that I've already prepared. Okay. And I got a little bit of a, a white chocolate sauce that I'm going to put on there, and I'm just going to kind of squirt that across. Okay, just like that. And a little bit of mint. It's amazing how you can just make a dessert just that much more appetizing by simply just dressing it up. We'll just put that little mint right in there. Okay, and just to kind of accentuate the flavors. Whenever you use a sauce or you use uh, a garnish of some sort, you want to make sure that it ties in with the main ingredients of that particular dessert. What often ends up happening is we put, for instance, we put parsley on everything. And, and parsley isn't something that is necessarily uh, important to, the, to that particular dish. So, you know, we don't, it's, we're just doing it just to be doing it, then it's not really a good thing to do. Okay? And then just to add a little bit more pizzazz to it, if you have a little bit of chocolate, and you don't need uh, special Belgium chocolate like what I have here. It's very expensive stuff. You can use any kind of old chocolate there. So it just has to be a semi-sweet chocolate. You don't want to have a bitter chocolate, okay? It won't taste very good. All right. And we're just going to take a little box grater, and we'll just sprinkle it right over the top, and, and there you have it. This is. Uh, uh, a chocolate bread pudding, okay, used by common ingredients that you have in your home. Nothing special to buy, and it's uh, really a very easy thing to do, but ooh la la, your guests will just absolutely adore it. They'll think you slaved over this particular dish, so, and there it is.